This video is kindly sponsored by Ren. More about them later in the video. Hi everyone, this is Ned. Thanks for joining me here again on this channel on a Natty Nook. It's been a while since I kind of like sat in front of the camera and talked like this. Uh, I haven't really been doing anything about my content ever since I filmed and edited the how to look up video. That really took a lot out of me so I really haven't been doing anything uh, the past two weeks two weeks so it was a good break for me i actually recently watched this documentary video type thing by planet a and it was talking about how we didn't really care about the climate enough oftentimes the climate crisis or like climate solutions are presented as very 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 like hard to understand concepts and this is true and the documentary video did talk about how science communicators and i guess like generally climate communicators are really important in this aspect in trying to bridge the gap between climate science and climate knowledge and everyday practices and i did talk a lot about why the everyday was so important in trying to mitigate the climate crisis with that in mind in this video i wanted to share a few resources channels, podcasts, uh, whatsoever media that you can find online that will help in understanding some of the more complex issues surrounding um, the climate crisis today. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit more about today's sponsor, REN. REN is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and offset it by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects such as tree planting, mineral weathering and rainforest protection. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out the appropriate carbon footprint that you have and the different projects that you can fund in order to reduce it. But of course, simply funding carbon projects isn't the only way to a more climate friendly life. In addition to adopting more sustainable habits as well as working on climate solutions in your own area, contributing to these diverse projects around the world that work closely with people on the ground is just another avenue of support you can consider if you do have the means for it. So one project that I want to talk about is the tech-enabled rainforest protection project based in Amazon. So this is a project that provides technological assistance to indigenous Amazonians in the form of monitoring tools such as drones and smartphone apps that help them quickly detect and report illegal deforestation. So this is one example I think of like tech being used in a good way and not just techno optimism in a way that's really unrealistic and it's a way of assisting people who are already at the forefront of protecting our very precious generations and they've been doing this for many generations. It's a, rel it's a relatively known fact that while indigenous people only make up about 5% of the world's total population, they protect up to 80% of the world's total biodiversity. So that's really a lot of people and they have already been doing great work. So what we can do is to support them in the work that they're already doing. Nonetheless, the climate crisis is a very complex issue so with all types of solutions that we can all take on. If contributing financially is one of the things that you can do, you can choose to offset your carbon footprint with REN. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their names. So thank you once again REN for sponsoring this message and for showcasing such transparency in the funding of different climate projects around the world. So check out the link below. Thanks, and now back to the actual video. <laughs> Hi. Is this angle weird? The neighbors upstairs has been doing renovations for a while now. Maybe I'll just walk and talk at the same time. Yeah, but... I don't know whether you can hear me with the mask on. Anyway. Maybe I should talk. I have my drink here, so don't come at me. I'm drinking water. Let me show you. Okay, so where was I? I was talking about uh, science communication, climate communication, and yeah. I have a couple of recommendations in terms of like channels, podcasts, and newsletters. Um, but for Instagram, I have more of like local recommendations because I am in Singapore, so I do follow more Singaporean accounts. There's like a there's like there's like a black and white bird. Why are you so loud? Hi friends, I think I got um attacked almost I mean I got chased by a bird. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think I got a bit too ambitious and got too close to the bird and the bird didn't like it and came after me 
Um, I'm I'm fine. I'm so sorry <laughs> to the bird. I'm so sorry I invaded your space. Yeah, that was such a ride. Um, this is why you don't approach wildlife unless you're a professional or you're. There's a reason to approach them. There's no need to approach them. Please don't follow my example. That was really bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyway, I tried to identify the bird, but I can't. It's like a white, it has, a, it has black feathers and a white belly, and it had a pretty, like a really bright orange beak, and it had kind of like sand-colored legs. If anyone knows what bird that is, and with that call, uh, let me know. I still can't find it. Climate Adam is a channel that talks a lot about very everyday topics such as fast fashion or stove tops and presents issues in a very entertaining, funny way but also in a kind of sarcastic way. The production is pretty high level and I enjoy watching each of his videos. I think they're all really well informed and I think that it's all really well produced and with lots of great statistics, statistics that he actually backs up. So go check out his channel for kind of vaguely entertaining stuff. I feel like his stuff is great to follow Forward to people who might not have really talked about or thought about the climate crisis. Next uh, channel I'm going to recommend is Our Changing Climate. This is a no-brainer. I think a lot of people have learned about the climate crisis through this channel, Our Changing Climate, and this is like my one-stop guide, as in one-stop resource for a lot of things related to the climate. And um, Our Changing Climate adopts a very progressive um, socialist point of view towards the climate, so that's great as well. It really does try to be as diverse and inclusive in its content, and what it does a great job at is also including other content creators that deal with issues in their own specific context. So I think that's a great channel to follow if you want like very weekly, like very regular weekly updates, very thoughtful, meaningful discussions that's also very radical in a way, but also very grounded in political activism. So this is a channel that is quite political in nature. Two channels that I follow that are kind of similar are Climate Adam and Zontoro. Um, these two creators focus more on kind of communicating the very complex science of climate science like the IPCC are generally more complicated scientific topics uh, for the general public. So these two channels are grouped together because they produce really short videos that are very straightforward. I don't think they try to be entertaining but they try to be as effective as possible in making these findings as digestible as possible. And I really like Zontoro's um, lofo climate, like lofo beats for climate anxiety. I think that's a really great touch um, because it is really <laughs> relatable and I do listen to that lo-fi compilation quite a lot. Next is this channel called Kirsten Duxon. This is not really like a climate channel but this is kind of like an alternative ways of living channel. A lot of people that she features on her channel are people who focus on sustainable ways of living, um, trying to be as self-sufficient but also community driven as much as possible so there's a lot of permaculture, there's a lot of like um, self-sufficiency, a lot of communal living and I really really enjoy this channel a lot and it gives a lot of inspiration but of course its caveat is that it's still very white, it's still very again based in very traditional traditionally affluent society so you're gonna see a lot of white people you're not gonna see huge diversity in terms of the kind of alternative permaculture ways of living but I do appreciate that in a few of the videos um, the people who do hit these communes do attribute a lot of their learnings to indigenous people and to acknowledge that this is not invented by white people. I do think that people who have already been kind of like more privileged and affluent uh, have the bandwidth to experiment with alternative ways of life which is great I think they should and that should kind of be um, a way of experimenting that could be larger scale for a lot more people who can't readily access such models. Next I also have Planet A so this is DW Planet A I'm not gonna try and butcher the DW but it is um, the side channel that's centered on climate issues so this is the planet a channel and they have a lot of great like mini documentaries and a lot of very climate change related issues and not just climate change but a lot of like environmental issues as well wow it's really like a noise landscape out here yeah so they do um quite a lot of documentaries on the climate and the environment so that's a great place to check out if you're interested as well 
and I'll link down a couple of other documentaries that are not they are from channels that are not primarily centered on the climate but I found really helpful. If you're wondering why I'm moving locations so much, it's because like I there's this major wasp that was coming in and this is making me realize how bad I am at being outside. This is terrible. I am so bad at being outdoors. I should go out more, go touch some grass, yeah. Okay, moving on to Instagram handles. Like I mentioned earlier, like I only really follow local uh, local Instagrammers because like local Instagram profiles because it's really important to stay informed of like what's happening locally and I admit that this is something that I should really improve on which is understanding more of the local context in which um, environmental change can be done um, and the first Instagram profile I want to recommend is the SG Climate Rally profile so this is a great group of young activists, environmental activists that have been super pivotal in kind of educating the public about Singapore's climate policies as well as just kind of advocating for a very intersectional social justice framework towards the climate crisis here in Singapore. So um, they do really great work and they do a lot of community organizing um, and I, I think that's a great thing and for that I really really appreciate their work. If you're trying to figure out what to learn more about like in the Singaporean context you can go and follow them and keep up to date with what they're doing. Uh, next is uh, The Weird and Wild. Uh, Tyrion is the person behind this page and she's such an amazing creator really using her creativity to drive lots of great messages and she really up she updates her page really often she collaborates with a lot of people talking about all the ways that we can enact great change like just from every day it's also really really involved in collaborating and partnering with like the government or like institutions so she's been like partnering with lots of people and her name has been featured everywhere and I feel like her illustrations are so easy to understand and really very relatable I do think that she's doing great work with her illustrations and generally being such a great spokesperson like really take on, taking on um, this very public role really well okay, next on my list are a couple of podcasts and newsletters the first podcast I want to talk about is how to save a planet by Gimlet. Now I guess this is like the most general general public podcast like it's very much for a general audience um, but again it's still very centered on activists and policies that are enacted in America. I would say this podcast is great for very general listening. I think it's really for like beginners who don't really know what to think about in the climate crisis. I mean I do really appreciate how they have guests from many different sectors. Uh, talking about some of the success stories with climate policies, economic policies and things like that. I do think this is more for like people interested in general policy changes about the climate. However, if you want to find more radical, kind of like radical politics, um, I would recommend Green Dreamer. This is a great podcast, although the terminology can get really, really hard to understand at some points. Like it is very, very radical in a way that the it's a lot about like spiritual connection and things like that but I do find it very very uplifting in a lot of ways and they cover tons of topics like they have so many episodes out and each episode it does give a lot of wisdom I do think it's a very wisdom um, wisdom enlightening kind of podcast in a way um, I really do listen listen to it when I need uh, a bit more of that kind of envisioning hope in my life I don't really read newsletters a lot, but I will link down a couple below that I, feel, that I feel are really interesting. The one that stands out to me most is Jen Dread. It talks about climate anxiety. It's one of the first few newsletters that I've read that really helped me put a name to like eco-anxiety and the way that writing about it and the psychology of the climate right now is like just so different from how we would have imagined it a couple of years ago and climate anxiety I think is a really huge issue like the psychology of living in today's environment um, is something that we don't really talk a lot about obviously it's not really a priority in a lot of places but I do think it is a burgeoning area of concern for a lot of people especially um, when there is first-hand trauma of destruction but there's also a lot of lingering trauma of um, place and of grief and of relationships um, and that kind of thing like destruction in general. I will link down a couple of other newsletters and media sites that I find a great um, in just reading generally about the climate. I kind of cross the stage where I'm just learning for the sake of like learning a lot of climate related information. I feel like um, the first step is always knowing more climate related facts and climate related information but then the second step is always to figure out how to process it and how to really build something out of that which I feel like I am 
going slowly into but obviously I'm not a perfect person in this aspect I'm still learning a lot of things I do hope that these channels have, will help you in staying up to date I think one great thing about these recommendations as compared to as opposed to books is that they are a bit more up to date and they are very responsive to things um, happening right now and they are responsive to readers I guess these are things that you can actually interact with like you can actually um, comment on people's posts you can actually like suggest topics um, and listen to things on the go whereas books tend to be a lot more isolated like it tends to be a product of an author's dedicated effort um, very dedicated effort and it might not be as inclusive as some of these kind of independent creators or independent producers and things like that so um, that's that's it for this video I know it was a pretty chaotic video and I did a lot of location changes and I was I'm outdoors. I yeah, I realize I really need to be outdoors more often. This is really a great realization. There's just so many things happening. Um and I'm glad that I'm able to go out. Yeah, and glad to share all these resources with you. And again, thank you Ren for sponsoring this video. I know it's very chaotic. Thank you all once again for supporting my channel and for always watching my stuff and being so kind in the comments. So many of you watched the, my previous video on how to look up and honestly that was like many months in the making. I was just so hesitant about all the ideas out there. I just felt like I didn't really have a voice but then um, I realized that we just need more voices and more conversations like these to continue and I do hope that with these conversations there can also be changed but I'm also learning a lot about these things like how to really effectively enact change so thank you once again for being a big part of my life and yeah see you in the next video whenever that might be and I hope till then that you take care and stay safe yeah I'm just rambling right now I don't know whether you can actually see the cars in the background this is like an exercise spot you know <laughs> There's like a bird there, but it's not moving. <laughs>